We are live. We are live. <laughs> <A lie. laughs> we need to come up with a better theme tune than that, don't we, Gary? We really I know. And it's funny because we never really know when we've actually gone live. We're just like waiting. Are we live? Are we not? Ah! <laughs> There's always that bit at the beginning. I haven't quite figured it out yet how to do it, where we're sort of sitting there looking. Anyway, lovely YouTubers, how are you? Uh, this is the wonderful Gary Mills. I am just plain old Rachel Pearman. <laughs> Not so wonderful. Not and, so plain. Uh, <laughs> and it is our regular, now it's called the Tea Time Tutorial. In England, tea time is known as kind of like, well, well, in the North, people say tea time when it's kind of like five, six o'clock, which of course some people say is dinner. And then in Lincolnshire, people say dinner is lunchtime. I Oh, the English, what are we like? But we're calling it Tea Time Tutorials because we always have our tea. <laughs> there we are. So we have got our lovely cups of tea and the lovely Gary Mills gives me a little tutorial every week because I run Crafty Monkeys and Crafty Monkeys is a place where there are amazing teachers and skills on offer for you to learn. And then one week, Gary said, why don't you learn some of these skills? And I said, why don't we do it every week on YouTube? So here we are. Now, we always do a bit of mindfulness at the beginning because, you know, life is tough. It's tough. I don't want to bring the mood down. I don't want to bring the mood down. Life is tough. But it is. And so we always try to give you a little something to lift your spirits or something. It's just a phrase that you might remember. And then it helps you at some point in your life. I will put the time, time codes underneath. So if you're not watching us live, you will see the time codes and you can go straight past the mindfulness. My nose is running. I think that means yeah. something in the spiritual world. Or I've got a cold. <laughs> or <laughs> it's just, it's cold. We're cold. We're cold. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so yes. So I, but what are we going to do today? And then for people who want to skip forward, um, what we'll do the mindfulness first. But what we're going to do today, Gary, I know you won't tell me. It's a big secret today. It's a surprise. Well, I'm going to call it, we're going to say, um, either put a knot in it or tie a knot in it, Rachel. So that's, it, but it's about drawing in a bit of paper and manipulation. Okay. And so, yeah, that's what we're doing after we've had a little bit of mindful. All right, and felt tips. I love a box of felt tips. They are. Look at that. Lovely. That's my ingredients for today, apparently. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're going to be doing that then um, in yeah. a matter of moments. But first of all, it's a touch of mindfulness. So I just wanted to um, just do a little quote that I'll say a little quote that I heard the other day. Um, Oprah Winfrey has been interviewed and someone said to her, um, well, you've interviewed loads of successful people. What makes a successful person a successful person? What, what you know, how do they get there? And she said, and I think you can put this to all sorts of areas of your life, not just about success. I think, you know, when you say success, you can think you mean business. But I think it means just like in your life in general. And she said, you know, the people who get what they want and the people who manifest what they want and they achieve what they want are the people who know what they want. And she said, and it's the people who focus and know what they want that can get it. Because if you don't, your mind is in chaos. And at first when you listen to that, you think, well, it makes sense. But actually, when you really think about it, how many of us do sit down and, you know, we, we're, we're all so crazy these days. Everything is going around in our brains and, and we don't seem to be able to, to make anything work 100%, do we? And then we sit there sometimes and then we get disappointed. And then you can start spiraling down into depression or whatever. But I think it's really important to sometimes stop, sit down and really think about what it is that you want. And she said, when you know what you want, you start making the steps to get what you want. When you don't know what you want, your mind is in chaos and you can't possibly make any steps to get anything done. And I think that is a really, really good, a good um, lesson yeah. for all of us. Yeah, it's about that focus, isn't it? It's about being focused. Um, and some really successful people are what we would describe as single minded, very single minded, very driven. And they just see that goal, what they want. They picture their goal in front of it and they're driving forward. So that might be more the extreme or the harder edge of being to want to be successful. And how do we how do we denote, how do we say what is successful and what isn't successful? Is it because you've got um, a lot, is it monetary um, 
uh, rewarded or are you rewarded by the just the satisfaction of what you're doing so you know that is success and success it has to be in how you feel in yourself how successful you are it doesn't matter how other people say oh you're successful you're not successful it doesn't matter it's how you feel in yourself but it is about the focus and it's so difficult to get take those distractions of life away and then you know we might be going down a pathway think this is what i want to do but then something comes on go well if you carry on doing this this is that little voice in our head going well if you carry on um you might not be able to pay the bills or um or you might be um not paying attention to a family member or to someone that you really like and so that that is those are the distractions that we have to almost like put in their box or have to reconcile or have to incorporate in this focus forward that's what i think anyway you know yeah i mean I I, think so. yeah carry on no i was gonna say i agree i think i think it is about really focusing and like you said there about that family member so you know we can think of it as in terms of business but it's not it's in, in terms of you know if you've got a family member who's going through something and you really want to help them um it's how you achieve that it's how do you get that to that goal what can you do to help them um and and then you you know but i think sometimes you can sit there and you can think well i want to do this and i want to do this and i've got to do this and i've got to do that but it, like you say, it's, it's really focusing on what you want to do. And she was meaning as the bigger picture. She was meaning our life's purpose. And I do think there's some really interesting things. I was listening to a podcast last night by Wayne Dyer, and he was talking about finding our inner purpose. And he was saying there about he's known some incredibly successful people who've got to the top of their tree, like lawyers and people like that. And they uh, got loads of money. They've got the house. They've got the holidays. They've got the job. They've got the career. They've got the all that. And they hate their lives because they're it, they always wanted to be a designer or they mm. always wanted to be an artist or they always wanted to do something else. They wanted to work with people and give back to the community. And here they are as a lawyer because that's what they thought they should be and that's what they were told they should be with their parents maybe or whatever. Yes. And yes. he said it's about finding that inner purpose. And he said when you find that inner purpose, when you find out who you are, you will naturally feel this excitement and this excitement will propel you forward into what you want to do. And that links in with Oprah. Find out yeah. what you want to do and sit and ask yourself. This is what he said. We should sit and ask ourselves, who am I? Yeah. Who am I? Yeah. Who am I inside? Yeah. Not this that we're carrying. This is just the outer. What about our souls? Who are we and what do we want? And, you know, that takes sometimes that can take a bit of bravery and it, uh, what we call a leap of faith to yes. move forward to do that. But, you know, sometimes there is not, I wouldn't say an easier way, but a gentler way to actually move forward. You don't necessarily have to give everything up and jump into that deep water. And, and that's where we want to be heading. What you can do is not give everything up, but gradually move towards Baby that goal. Baby steps, absolutely. So you don't have to think, oh my God, no, that's impossible. But just one little baby step and then another little baby step and then more. And then actually, before you know it, you are going towards what you feel inside exactly. what you want to do. Exactly. And I think that's really important, those little steps, because that lawyer, yes, he may not, if he'd actually, you know, discovered he wanted to be that, let's say, whatever he wanted to do, work in the community. Well, you can't suddenly just hand the keys back to the bank and hand the cars back and walk away and you know because you've got responsibilities and that's exactly. not real life but what he could do was start by maybe volunteering somewhere and then when he volunteered somewhere he might meet someone who said well we actually have a job you know and you, and then and then suddenly yeah. you're yeah. on your path aren't you and I'm and I'm sure I have I've told you the story of how I ended up becoming a designer now I come from a background of well my father was an engineer my mum was a secretary um, but then they went into catering and I thought, well, OK, that's that's creative catering. So I thought I was going to do that. And I was doing that in, as I turned into my 20s, early 20s. But I realised it wasn't what I wanted to do. So my baby step, my baby step was, well, why don't you just do an evening class? Go back and do start doing some artwork because I knew and I'd always said as a child, I want to be a designer. I want to, you know, and I was always making and sewing. Why was I then a catering manager? Um, and running a catering establishment. So that one baby step, oh my God, did it lead on to the next thing and the next thing and the next thing? And before exactly. I knew it, by the time I got to my mid twenties, I yeah. was doing a degree in um, fashion design. And that's like, oh my God, like, you know, like six years, five, six years before that, 
that was not on the cards, but it was in here as a wish. Like, oh, I'd love to do that. That's really what I'd like to do. But that doesn't seem possible because really you come from a, a background where no one goes off and design. You don't make money from design and art. Oh, no. You need to get a proper job. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, that's a, that's a really quick scenario of where I was and how I bet many, many other people are out there thinking, oh, my God, I need to. This isn't I'm not passionate where I am. Where's my passion? And how do I get to my passion? Well, it was just one little step that exactly. evening class that did it. That was like, whoa, you're you're now the universe or whatever was around me was going, yeah, you're on the right path now. We're going to lead you to where you want to be, where you should be, where you should be. And it's really weird because Oprah Winfrey used you as an example. She said, oh, I know this good. guy called <laughs> 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 and it's never too late that's all I'll say to you people out there mm. because I may look 22 <laughs> with filters <laughs> and a lot of work no I'm not um but you know I'm in my 50s and you know I've started this company not, not long ago so um it's never too late it's never too late right then lovely Gary shall we do our little thing shall yes. we <laughs> now I'm very excited because I've got no idea what I'm doing today so oh, what well you right. know what, what we're doing so should we just okay. start Let's, what we're going to do is we're going to put, we're going to decorate some paper and then we're going to put a knot in it and it's going to become something else. So what do you need in front of you? You need just, just ordinary, this is just photocopy paper, just the printer paper. You need some printer paper, okay. either some scissors, a blade to cut with, depending what you've, whatever you've got at hand. You don't even actually, you could just tear a strip of paper, something to measure possibly but you could do it just by folding that's fine but you might need something to measure and I've got in front of me oh they're all rolling across the table I've got some felt tips I've yep. got um a pen and I've got a pencil here so I've got all of that and possibly for later but though it's not absolutely definitely I've got a hole punch and I've got a bit of thread well you know you don't have to use that but I'm going to show you what you could possibly make this into how about you I saw a lovely box of felt tips in front of you Rachel Yes, let me just replace. So I have got my felt tips. I have yeah. got my thread. I've got my hole punch. I've got my scissors and I've got my paper. Have you got a, um, a biro type pen near on your desk? Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, I, know. I love a box of new felt tips. You remember as a kid when you got your coloring book and that new box of felt tips came, but like now for Christmas, like, wow, I can't wait yes. to use them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> fabulous okay right come back to my table let's just get started oh it's so, all about you gary it's, it's all, all about, about you. me <laughs> 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 there's that focus. okay what we've got to do is we've got to have a, a we want a, all we want from this and you can make several from this but you just want a strip of paper and the strip of paper is around about i'd say about an inch and a quarter wide so you could just you can measure if you want to or you can just do a guesstimate and you can fold over that amount if you want to so you can just whatever but it's got to be not too wide but about an inch and a half now you can cut that inch and a half with a pair of scissors so cut your strip away or you, if you're if you've got a knife like a craft knife handy you can always just use the craft knife and just cut yourself a strip of paper so I'm going to just do that and you should do that as well Rachel so yep, cut yourself a, cut yourself a strip of paper yeah there you are don't you don't well you can use that paper or uh, something to like lean on just for coloring in because I don't I'm not gonna um I don't want to get my mat dirty with felt tip all over it but so I'm just gonna lean on that in a minute um so you can say save your other piece of paper right so this strip of paper what do you what are you gonna do with this right so what I want you to do is I just want you with a piece of paper I just want you to fold in half like that but I don't want you I don't really want you to crease this end just sort of imagine where the half of the paper is there mm -hmm. and there and then I want you to fold it again in quarters like so yeah and this time where you've got all the bits on that side you know you've got all the folded bits I want you just to crease that with just just lightly not too hard just give it a little pinch so that when you open it up it works out to you've got a quarter here two quarters in the middle and a quarter at the end there. Got that? I think so. All right. Okay, now oh, get yeah. your bio. <laughs> there we are. 
Right, lovely, superb. Now with a biro or a pen or whatever, you're going to do a little bit of doodling. Now, imagine, let's go to one end. This is, say, we call this at the end. So this is the end of the, um, the strip of paper. And I'm just going to do something which is linear, linear stripes. So I'm just going to draw some stripes. Can I do anything? Oh, keep it linear. Okay. Keep it linear at the end. That are all made. So you can do low, long stripes. Just do free. You can use a ruler if you wanted to. But honestly, it's much better if you just do freehand. It doesn't matter if it goes slightly wobbly. That's OK. Right. Got that. I can see you doing that. So then what you can do within the linear stripes is something but down the stripes, something down there. But the same thing. So I'm going to just do maybe just like little V's. I'm just going to do little V's. <laughs> I'm doing little V's and you're on upside down V's and you'll see later why I'm doing upside down V's. But you can do anything. It doesn't matter. And in fact, the more you do with these, you can think, oh, I'll do that down that end. So I'm just doing little V's up and down. Little V's. And then, is it, does it have to be the same on it between each row? Well, it can be, but it doesn't matter if it's not. It really doesn't. It's fine. So I'm just doing upside down V's, little, almost like little tiny little Try mountain type things really up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Now there's two sides to this strip of paper. So when you've got to one side and you've done that, so you've done all your little stripes on one side, you're going to flip it over and you're going to do the same. It doesn't matter if they don't have to be on top of each other, but you're just going to do the same pattern. For now, another time when you do it, you might do a different pattern. And you're going to do on that side, up and down, up and down, up and down. Yeah, that's quite nice. And you could lose yourself. I mean, this is something when we've done mindful doodling before. And this is really, it's sort of mindful doodling with a purpose at the end of it. So sometimes... So, Gary, I missed that. Do I draw the lines on the other side? Yeah, so flip over and exactly the same... You've done that side. That's yeah. it. I can see you doing that. That's all right. Flip over and do, and do a similar thing on the other side. Yeah. Okay. And, and they don't have to be the same patterns that we had before. No, they don't have to be. It's up to you. Whatever you want to do on that side, you do different if you want to. And they don't have to be, can be, they can go wrong. They can, they don't all have to match up. They don't all have to be the same, but it's just sort of like a doodly pattern, one on each side. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. It will all make sense in the end. Really? <laughs> it will. <laughs> I'll believe you. <laughs> All right. This is very intriguing. It is. And this is going to be, you know, think about when you, we sort of like start to colour it in and everything. like that. This is a game like last week. It's something you could get all the kids around the table or you're in the office. You're like, oh, my God, I'm so bored or something. Or you're, you know, you're at somewhere and you just think, well, what shall I do? This is something really easy. And once you start making one of these, you'll be making loads. <laughs> OK, cool. Right. OK, done that. OK, the next section is this long, the middle two, you know, the middle section, which is actually two quarters in this middle section. And that we can have another pattern. And I thought for my pattern, I was just going to do loads of different spirals of different sizes. So I'm just going to do loads of spirals, going to fill in in between the spirals with larger and smaller spirals. And I'm just going to do lots of spirals. But you could do crosses, little stars squares well, you know, it's definitely that thing we, we used to say we used to have a, a, a jotter pad by the telephone didn't we and it's those sort of things while you're talking to someone on the phone you're just doing something like yeah. that I've always done circular things whenever I've you know whenever I'm um, doodling I always go for the circle I wonder what that means hmm, I wonder if you just because you're going around in circles or you're not getting all the yeah. <laughs> That's the story of my life. <laughs> repeating <laughs> circles and cycles. Repeating circles. We all feel like that, don't we? Sometimes oh, I'm just going round in circles. But maybe life is just like a one big circle. It just goes round and then we and start again steps. and then do it, yeah. you know. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. Cool. So same thing. 
flip over and then do, it could be a similar pattern on the other side. It might be something completely different, but if it works for you, my spirals were working for me today. This is literally, I decided this morning, this is what I was going to do. As you know, I told you this morning what you needed and it just sort of came to mind. I'd seen this, this thing done on, I think something like browsing through. I can't take credit for inventing this, um, but I've seen this done. Maybe not, maybe a bit more controlled than this, but this is just less control. I like the freedom. I like to just play. And sometimes that takes the pressure off you when you're not having to have it. It's not got to be perfect. It can be fun. It can be quite loose. And of course, once I show you when we move on in a while, you'll think, ah, I can apply that to this. I can do this to that. Da, 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 da. I hope I'm not bigging it up too much. My God, you might all be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I am intrigued as to where oh, this no. is going. Where is it going? <laughs> oh, okay. <I've> got... Right. <laughs> belt tips now, Rachel. Belt yeah. tips, get the belt tips out. So okay. we're going to colour, so the bits you've decorated, you're going to colour in. And I, down, what I've got, this is where I put my other piece of paper underneath because I don't want to get belt tip all over the table. All right. Anything like that. So, because that, do you remember when we were kids and our mums or our parents would say, put something down on the table before you're colouring in? So yeah. that's what we're doing. So, um, <laughs> So now you've just got to colour in your section. So I'm just going to start with the end here and I'm just going to do, um, I'm going to just play with orange and green at the end here. So I'm just going to fill in like, almost like fill in over the top. Hopefully you can still see the pen underneath. Da, 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 da. And I'm going to, funny enough, when you flip over, you'll see that the, especially on the sort of like the cheaper photo or uh, printer paper, the colour comes through, especially with these felt tips. So if it's come through, just go over it on the back in the same colour, just to sort of bit intensify the colour, and that will do that. I wouldn't go too mad with, um, you can leave some white, it doesn't have to be all coloured in, it can be like you're doing, Rachel, like just cherry picking bits and pieces that you're colouring in, that's fine. I'm going to use, I think I'm going to just use a blue, and some of these little, the middle section, like the circles, I'm going to colour in, and I'm going to colour, maybe again, use two colours. Da, 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 da. This makes a change of um, not using the sewing machine when we do one of our little activities, Rachel. Thank goodness I can manage this. <laughs> you can manage this. And we haven't managed to lose something on the floor as yet. As so, yet. As yet. Give me time. Saying, <laughs> I'm just going to flip over. So where I can see the blue coming through on this side, I'm going to just let the, just going to go over it on the other side. But it might be, you might have better quality paper than mine. Mine's just cheap, very cheap. Um, yeah, mine's print. not going through, so I am. I obviously oh. have got high quality. You obviously got better quality paper, and then I'm going to just put in another little colour. That reminds me of that song now from Fame. Hi, Fidelity. Hi. Did you used to watch Fame when you were a kid? Do you remember? Oh gosh, one? yes. Didn't I just? And oh. I used to make. <laughs> I used to make the outfit. So you know, I don't know. People might not remember leg warmers. Do you remember leg warmers? Of you, course. If you were in fame, if you were in fame, you had to have your leg warmers because you had to keep your ankles in case your ankles got all cold and they might like sprain an ankle. So <laughs> in the dancing. So I created this lovely little outfit. I mean, it's camp as anything. I took a tea, um, a sweatshirt, and so I cut the le the sleeves off of the sweatshirt, and they became my leg warmers. And then I did like a crop top effect when I cut the t-shirt, like the um, sweatshirt a little bit shorter, so I could really be a fame. I could be in fame. I was like dancing with my leg warmers on, I'd be crop top on, and it's just so wonderful. <laughs> I can see it, Gary. I, can, I, I do need photographic <laughs> evidence though, if you've got any photographs. Oh, no, I, luckily there was no evidence. <laughs> <laughs> well, I went a step further because of course I, you know, wanted to be in fame so much that I went to drama school. Yes. And let me tell you, it was nothing like fame. <laughs> there was no jumping on cars outside. Or getting on the refectory tables and dancing in the refectory. No, there wasn't no? even a refectory. There was a tiny little room and a girl who told who sold tuna sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> Could she only make a tuna sandwich? That's all I remember was a tuna sandwich. Maybe they were a bit of chicken on occasion. Oh, my God. But yeah, it wasn't... Uh, it wasn't like fame at all. Oh dear. Oh dear. 
Although the teachers were a bit like the ones in fame. I know we had an old chap called Rudy Shelley. Yes. And he was 86 and he used to be a Russian ballerina. And he oh, was wow. now he was now the he was amazing. He was now the movement coach. And he used to make us all stand in first position, even though it wasn't a dance class, um, for an hour. And everybody else who was like 25 was in agony at the end of it. And he was still standing proud at 86. Wonderful. Yes, and I bet. So. About posture, he said you had to imagine a lemon between your butt cheeks and you had to <laughs> squeeze the lemon. Squeeze it, <laughs> darling. Squeeze it. Rudy <laughs> Shelley. He taught them all. I used to say, and of course, Danny, meaning Daniel Day Lewis, when he oh, was yeah. here, and I used to teach him. I don't know what the voices I'm doing. It's not Rudy. Anyway, is that got... a real? Is that a real accurate voice you're doing? Is that not how accurate. we? Not well, accurate. Well, it's supposed to be Russian, and that's not a Russian voice, is it? <laughs> <laughs> I like the squares of those squares. I think that's quite nice. Lovely. Right, have you, so we've got now, we've got a strip. So we've got a quarter of the strip, which has got some decoration on down there. And then we've got two quarters in the middle there. And then we've got some plane up here. We're keeping that plane, okay? So now I want you to just watch her. What, this is where we put the knot in it, Rachel. So we're yeah. going to put a knot in the paper. So we're going to, Fold it over like that, and then we're going to fold that through there and pull it through. Hello. Like so. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Let's have a look. Get, let's see it on camera. Let's see. All right, Rachel, you've done it. I know. <laughs> Don't be so surprised. <laughs> I think we should do more of these live mornings. I'm clearly awake in the morning. You but... are. You're like really, you're with it. You're on it this morning. Okay. So, like that? Like yeah, that? this is like very exciting. Pretty. Yeah. Very good. Does it look like anything at the moment? No. No? Okay, right. Let's do a little bit more work on this then. So I'm going to I'm going to do it with a pencil, but um, you can do this just freestyle, okay? So I'll do it, and then you can then decide what you want to do. So I'm going to just, from this point under here, I'm just going to do a little V. I'm just going to cut, like, I'm going to cut out a little V there. And up here, I'm going to cut a little V like that. And then I'm going to just round, I'm just going to round this bit off here, this little bit here. So. If I show you, and then I'll put it back on the desk and you can see what I've done. So I'm gonna just cut, da, 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 like that. Cut there. I'm gonna cut a little V up here. And I'm just gonna cut. Does it matter how much of this we cut away? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, can you oh, see that? It's a bird. It's a bird. So oh. then I'm gonna put, and then I'm gonna put a little eye like that, and I'll put an eye on that, that side. See, it's double, this one can be double-sided. And in fact, I'm gonna just use a little bit of my yellow and just give him a little bit of a yellow beak there. So a little bit of a yellow, like that, okay? Yeah. I've got that. It's a little bird. So you could just free, you know, freestyle the, the shape. You know, if you feel like, oh, I better just draw that round with a pencil before I do it. I think probably one or twice, you'll probably use, you'll have to do it with a, the pencil and then draw it out. And then afterwards, once you start doing those, you just like you'll just be able to freestyle it. Mm, not sure what my head looks like. Let's go. Don't worry. Don't overwork it. You could overthink at this stage. You could definitely overthink it. Right. Right. All right. Yeah. Okay. A little eye, a uh, one little circle eye either side, and give him a little beak. Okay. And again, you could like you could. A little beak. A little beaky. I think that's orange. I want yellow, don't I, Robin? You could have yellow or orange. Right. Little beaky. Okay. Little beaky. Little beaky. So um, we've got that. Okay. Well, you could just leave him at, like that now. But I thought, why don't we, just with our scissors, we just cut down our little strip. Just cut, not right to the end, maybe just the little strips here. And I'm just going to cut... Not too thin, so I'm just cutting like that. Now you can either, either either, roll up these strips on a pencil, like so. So you could like give them like little curls, like so. you could like curl those out, and you can curl them either way. So you can flip them over. One curl can go one way, and one can go the other. Like that. Just sort of manipulating the 
bits of paper. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> that looks all right. That's fine. I did think, you know, sometimes what you can do to curl paper, you can just sort of like roll, um, rub the scissors along one side. But be yes. careful. If it's, but if it's like we're using quite cheap, well, I am, I know you're not, but cheaper photocopy paper, it can tear. And if it's not, and also if the, um, the felt tip is still quite wet, it can. But I think just rolling it on a pencil is probably fine. And if you're doing it with children, this is probably the safer way to do it. Get them to just roll it up on a pencil. So this can now be calm. So you could stick that on something if you want to. But if we use a hole punch, which we'll find on our desk, and just do a little punch just on the main bit of his body, just put a little hole in there. Then we can just get a little bit of thread and put the thread through the hole and it becomes a little tree decoration. So if we're or on a pot plant or something like that, so we can then have it on a little and hang it up. But you've gone off looking for your hole punch now, Rachel. Yeah, I've got it. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Putting my thread through. <laughs> you cheeky monkey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a little cheeky. Lay little it is. for me. I tell you what did go down well. We've had loads of people downloading that little pattern of the boot that we did in our tea time tutorial. Last oh, week. that's really good. Oh, so we have lots of little, yeah. lots of little booties on trees. Lots of little booties on trees. And they could, could be really nice little, pre in fact, rather than on the tree, you could use that pattern. Um, yeah. You know, when you lay the table up Christmas for Christmas dinner and yeah. everyone has a little booty on their place and in it, you could put either a little gift or a little sweet that everyone has. So I know crackers can be quite expensive. And also I find crackers really disappointing these days compared to what they were like, aren't they? Compared to what we had when we were kids, unless you're going to spend an absolute fortune on crackers. And, you know, and is that really really what you want to spend all your money on for Christmas. Whereas you could make little, yeah, your little, your little booty. And then that could be on your play set. You put your napkin on the table, lay it down on the, on your play set. And with that on the top, with a little gift that you've created or made or found for everybody around the table, and they could open them up like with crackers. And you can still have your more cheaper crackers if you wanted to, but I just think it's really, it's quite nice. I've always liked little gifts on the table at Christmas time. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's shoved loads of pens in it. There we are. Look. So there you go. yeah, that's a brilliant idea. If anybody wants to make this, it is in our tea time tutorial. You'll see a picture of uh, Gary and I on the front holding our little booties. So that is yeah. in one of our tea time tutorials for free if you would like to make Wonderful. it. Um, but there is our bird. That's fantastic. I had no idea what he was going to be. <laughs> so you know great fun. On, on on your desk, you could have loads, you could cut loads of strips, or you could just decorate the paper first and then cut it up to strips. You could think and start being clever. These could become robins, so you could do lots of red and brown marks in the middle here and have tail feather, brown tail feathers, and they could be little robins. But I just think it's it wastes a little bit of time. It's a little bit of, like, takes your mind off things, just creating something, doodling and cutting out, folding and everything. And then, and it's a thing that you can do with, younger members as well so they can have fun doing it too exactly there we go <laughs> yes exactly the thing that's what struck me gary as i was doing this i often think about who is watching these videos and what they'll get out of them and you know it's not the end result although i th do think the end result is cute and you know from my little board behind that you can see all the little things that i'm making and uh, and keeping uh, yeah. but it is that mindfulness isn't it it's that it's, yeah that getting away from things for half an hour and as I was saying sometimes your brain can just become completely overloaded um, with things that you need to do and uh, you know it can get a little tough out there so what we say is I'm just removing that now so we can see our faces so what we say is you know have a little bit of mindfulness have a play do some doodling and just do something 
that's costing nothing. It's a piece of paper and some mm. felt pens, which I mean, you told me to get them this morning and I found them easy enough around my house. So, you know, you could even do it with, with a couple of biros. You wouldn't even have to have mm. all the colour pens. You could have a red and a black pen. You could even do it in pencil if you wanted. I mean, it's complete if you wanted to make a really kind of artistic bird. So, you know, I, I think uh, it's a really nice little um, exercise to do to just, it's mindfulness. It's just literally <laughs> relaxing for 25 minutes, which is lovely. Mm. Yes. I there we go. That's why Oprah was talking about you the other day. See, that's what she was talking about. <laughs> now, if anybody didn't watch the mindfulness, they're going, what? Oprah Winfrey was talking about Gary Mills. You're going to have to skip back and watch the interview. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, lovely Gary. Awesome. That was superb as always. Um, dare I ask what we have planned for next week? Oh, I haven't thought. <laughs> 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 I well i think we should do another little doodly thing next week as we said it's yeah. running up to christmas i think a lot of people are really yeah. busy and actually a lot of yeah. people get really stressed at this time of year really stressed and i think if you can just give people a little activity um to do i know that it's, i know that this is on here forever this content so somebody may be watching this in june but i think uh, we do have some live viewers and i think some people do watch us you know a couple of days after we output so let's for the month of december let's focus on some um Little doodly things, and maybe bring in a Christmas flavour. I don't know. Yeah. I just wondered if, um, if there's anybody out there that is that does little things, makes things for Christmas. If you want to let us know, um, you know, either message us or send us a picture um, and show us what you're doing, because you know it's it's a lovely way of spending a little bit of time. But also, you know, it could save money, and it just makes this sort of time of year, this festive time of year, a little bit special. If you're working your way up to it rather than just purchasing things that you're actually creating things that you're going to be sharing with other people so i just say it'd be nice to hear from other people what they're doing and you know send us a photograph or a picture and we always can put it up as a on, on our stories or anything like that so yeah, yeah absolutely so if you want to send us by the old social medias it's uh instagram uh gary is at gary mills designs and i uh i'm crafty monkeys so it's at crafty monkeys of course m-o-n-k-i-e-s uh, the links are down below in the in the chat as well. But we'd love to hear from you on our social media. Um, and of course, you can put anything underneath as a comment here as well. So please do that. would be fantastic. Please make sure that you like this video. If you enjoy eat our little bird, if you make one yourself, please like the video. It helps us to get the word out there. Um, <laughs> I might have to wear and, it in um, the Subscribe. <laughs> yes, and subscribe um, and tell your friends about us and uh, we shall continue. I like this very, that's a very... <laughs> The earring there go it's like a parrot on my shoulder now <laughs> if you go out into the village with that people are going to be safe <laughs> he's lost it <laughs> he's lost it oh it's that arty fella i've always thought he was a bit weird <laughs> and now he's lost the plot <laughs> anyway right so uh, lovely YouTuber, lovely Gary, thank you so much. And there's plenty more tea time tutorials. Don't forget as well, in the playlist, plenty of things to do. We've got three, I think three full classes on there, an hour long class of projects for you to make. There are also other projects that you can follow along and all sorts of quilty blocks as well. We've got a whole gamut of things on the channel, which is fantastic. So please do have a look. But thank you to you. Thank you to Gary. And we will see you next week. Bye. 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 <laughs> I'm gonna fly away now. <laughs> <laughs>